Well, uh, here I am with my cutting tool. I guess it's a paper trimmer, and um, you know you can buy those at uh, craft shops. But you know who needs a paper trimmer? All you all you really need to do you, you just need a pair of scissors or maybe an exacto blade and cut along a a line that you might have drawn with a straight edge or a ruler. Um, and I wasn't really going for an exact width, and I knew that if I cut the paper in that exact position that you see in the dis in the uh, picture um, that it would be a very narrow strip it turns out though that this is actually the right width at and by pure serendipity I, I actually got the right width out of this so oh I have two sheets of paper oh my that means I have two strips and possibly two hexaflexagons well I'll keep the other one for later we'll just work on the one so I put put away my paper trimmer, and um, now I am going to proceed to fold uh, the paper into its respective uh, triangles. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a little dot. And I remember V. Hart, uh, who I got the idea from, um, saying that all you need to do is draw a dot. And I'm going, gee, don't you need a compass, a ruler, protractor, geometry set? No, apparently not. So I tried it, and here I am trying it, and I'm, look, gee, that looks pretty equilateral to me. Okay, so every time I do a, now I'm going to actually tear that part off. I just don't like excess paper, and I'm not going to get another triangle out of that one. And notice when I fold, to make my equilateral triangle, the torn side has to be flush with one of the edges on the top or the bottom of the strip. And I do that, and notice I'm always going top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, and um, making new folds each time. It's actually a little disorienting when you try to do it yourself, which is why I'm really slow at this. You look at V. Hart, she has her video sped up, I'm sure. I don't know if she's faster at it than I am. Maybe she is. She's probably done hundreds of them. Well, she keeps three or four in her purse, remember, for those hexaflexagon emergencies, and I'm haven't had as many hexaflexagon emergencies as she had, so uh, I have to go at it a little slow. I'm less practiced at this. This is probably my third hexaflexagon I have ever made in my life. So, And this is the first time I have ever made it in this manner, but notice how I'm folding it. Always the one side of the triangle for the new fold is flush with either the top or the bottom of the strip. Okay, And the strip was made from uh, eight and a half inches, uh, a strip eight and a half inches long, which is the width of a letter sized piece of paper. And it was a very narrow strip and it turns out by pure luck that this was the ideal width for that length of paper and the width and the length I would imagine probably matter. I haven't, I haven't experimented with different widths, but I imagine if you have a wider strip, you're going to make bigger triangles on the same length of paper, which means you're going to you're not going to get your 19 triangles that you're supposed to have. So I'm supposed to I'm supposed to make 19 of these equilateral triangular folds, and um, so I'm almost there, over the halfway point definitely. And by this time, I remember when I'm doing this, I lost count. I'm so busy trying to make sure that my new fold is flush and equilateral and all that kind of stuff that I'm not really counting I'm sort of concentrating on okay are, is the fold even even as well you know can I is it folding right or is the next fold flush with one of the top what, what the top or bottom of the strip and then uh, you know making sure that all things are even so I'm only concentrating on that I'm not counting actually I'm not even counting but you know what this came out to exactly 19 <laughs> and again just pure luck just uh, it was great uh, that uh, luck smiled on me here but maybe it wasn't luck maybe if you have a strip of paper half an inch to three quarters of an inch which is what I've got somewhere somewhere between a half to a three quarter inch strip of paper uh, on eight and a half by eleven you're probably going to get 19 folds that's my theory I haven't experimented on it, but uh, this one seems to come out to exactly 19 with a little tiny bit of paper left over at both ends. 
and almost there you can see just a little bit there's starting to be springy happy triangles and this is going to be it's going to end up being a twisty fold you're going to notice that if I unfold this triangular set of folds now it'll be a kind of a twisty sort of fold it almost like it's almost like the edge of the papers with respect to each other are helical or, a, or even a double helix so we have now a finally the 19th fold but we need to take care of that little teeny bit of excess paper which I'm now making into a good sharp fold and I'm going to tear it tear that last little bit out and now just to prove it to myself I count the triangles to make sure that there are 19 of them because like I said I lost count I actually have no idea how many I just did I might have done too many um, but it turns out to be exactly 19 no excess so here I am kind of counting them and making sure that I'm not making mistakes here just trying to um, trying to count them out and my oh my hard to believe that it's 19 so I tried again I actually <laughs> don't believe I, I can't believe my luck but uh, try it again there you go 19 all right awesome so now okay now to uh, mark the sides and the way they're marked if you want to differentiate them there are many artistic ways of doing it but I'm not being artistic I'm just going to number them um, like V Hart did with her, with her demonstration. So it's supposed to be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Yes, yes, that's a 2 and that's a 3. And the 1, 2, 3 cycle goes on for 6 times for a total of 18 triangles, both upside down and right side up. Now the 19th uh, triangle at the end, as you can see, will say glue. So that will say glue, G-L-U-E just to remind myself of where to put the glue because this is going to be glued together uh, if you want now notice the first triangle on the other side also is marked glue so you have to mark them at both ends on opposite sides now the um, um, you don't need glue I use glue but you don't need glue you could use double-sided tape or you can maybe scotch tape them with ordinary tape somehow um, your pick I used uh, just garden variety dollar store school glue that's all I used now in retrospect I think I know how how I would have improved my folding of this but as you can see I can't get any of my numbers to match they're supposed to match and uh, I'm having issues here so now tried folding it a different way no that's not right either they're all different I gotta fold them in such a way that the numbers are the same. So numbers have to match up, at least in pairs. That, you know that at least that would make me happy if I could get that. Looks to me, no, that doesn't work either. Uh, looks to me like uh, let's try it this way. So turn it around. Actually, I tried to start it again on the same side. I had a different idea for the folding. Um, try it a different way. Oops tried a different way can't get the ones to line up okay how about this way one two two ah the two can go that way look at that so I got matching twos and then I got matching threes so I got a one by itself matching twos and matching threes and um, and I can keep going like that it, it can just you know be pairs of matches and I recall um, when I was constructing this that I wasn't quite I still wasn't quite sure where I was going with this because you know I didn't really didn't really follow much of what V Hart was saying and I, I well I did I, I played her tape about 20 times or so but on the other hand um, there we go matching numbers but um, 
I also wanted to find out what happens if I fold things in different orientations too. Uh, it's kind of just a curiosity thing. Now I have to fold it so all numbers of one side are the same. Now I, I've got to make sure all of these are twos. That's what I'm looking for here. So far I got five out of six. I'm batting a thousand. There's my sixth one, which would be fine if if I was actually I didn't have to take that one apart. I almost got it. But I remember having to partially disassemble that. That was almost right. Uh, I could have stuck with that and put the two gluey parts together, and that would be my day's work. But uh, no. Uh, going Okay. Yeah, the gluey parts are on opposite sides, but I could have just folded in, folded in that part. And I'm thinking, hmm, it's not quite working. Something, something wasn't right. Ah, here we go. There's the two gluey parts. Okay, they're together or still not sure of myself here but they should be together well, the glue should not be on the outside okay well hold on no they have to be on the inside and touching you're not supposed to see the two gluey parts so okay fold that one in yeah there we go clickety click now what do we got uh oh I have a four a two and a one there's a four yeah, everything else is a 2, but I got 1, 4. Well, that's not good enough. I'm going to have to figure out the problem there. Something something went wrong. Something went amiss. So I do have to partially disassemble it. The two gluey parts did go together, but uh, that wasn't good enough because I didn't get all 2s. I'm supposed to get all 2s for this one. And... Now let's make the gluey parts touch, fold that in and fold that down, clickety click, and there you go. We got it. Yahoo, and the other sides are all threes. All right. Now let's get the glue and uh, put the two gluey parts together. Um, and. Uh, the glue I have here is just dollar store school glue, just ordinary white glue. And I put a dab on each triangle. Maybe I used too much glue, I don't know. Just a little dot. I, maybe I should have only done it on one of the surfaces, but I did it on both. I don't think I needed to do that much glue. Um, I could have gotten away with only uh, one dab on one, one of the triangles. Cap's a little hard to put on uh, onto the glue, but I finally get it. And there we go. Put the two together, and now wait for it to dry. I'm hoping it won't take too long. But here's the glue, and there you go. Bought at a store called a buck or two. That's a, a dollar store, and you can see that bottle of glue was worth exactly one dollar. Eh, throw away some of my junky paper toss that aside and now let's see how that how that hexaflexagon is progressing uh, it shouldn't take too long and we only got a couple of minutes left um, in fact less than two minutes left in this video and um, hmm, let's take some of the excess gunk off of there but it looks good I'm pressing down and uh, making sure that the surfaces stay touched and now I'm going to be brave this soon after only a minute or not even a minute of drying and I'm going to try to fold these together and see if I can get my hexaflexagon and have hexaflexagon ecstasy there we go oh yes yeah almost no false start that one doesn't seem to open up too well um, maybe I have to fold it differently let's see Oh, what if I turn it over? Okay, let's see if I fold that in a different way. And I've got to make sure the gluey part of the three doesn't come apart. i got to be gentle. And voila, look, a side we've never seen before, all ones. And then, let's see, now all twos. We've got our twos again. Oh, my. What does the other side look like? can't remember if I flipped it over to see the other side. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, and it's all ones. So I got ones and twos, and before I had threes and twos. 
And now I have threes again, three and two. Okay, I'm back to where I started. Well, uh, I wasn't going to uh, do a full traversal of all six sides, but there I go. I have my ones, I have my twos, and when I open that again, I'll have my threes. At any rate, there you have it, a hexaflexagon.